Hey everyone, Luke Gordon here, and today I want to spend some time answering a question that I get online quite a bit from people who have already dealt with their BPPV, which is the most common type of positional vertigo that we see, also known as benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And the question they ask a lot of times is after they've already treated it, so they've gotten those little crystals out of the canals and they're no longer having the vertigo, is there something they can do to prevent it from coming back later on in the future? And I think the question is so common because if you've had BPPV once and you know how unpleasant it is, you really want to keep it from coming back. And unfortunately, recurrence is fairly common. Um, so I want to just give you a lot of tips and advice today on how to prevent it from coming back and also answer some specific questions that I get about things like Brant Daroff exercises and the Epi Maneuver and things like that. Just people asking questions about what they can do to prevent it from coming back. So I've got kind of a whole list of things I want to go down through here and just share with you if this is a question you're interested in. Um, you've probably had this type of vertigo before if you're interested in keeping it from coming back. So uh, just bear with me. I've got a, some good information for you here. So the first question I want to answer is, does the Epley, can you do the Epley maneuver? So you did the Epley maneuver to treat your vertigo first of all, which is the treatment for the most common type of BPPV, which is the posterior canal variant. So let's say you did the Epley Maybe someone helped you with it like your physical therapist and that worked really well. And you want to know, can you do that preventatively essentially to keep it from coming back? So the answer to that question is basically no. So, and, and the reason that why that, what I want to make sense of it for you is that if you've done the epi maneuver, essentially what you've done is you've taken those crystals out of the semicircular canal and you've done the positional you know, rotation, you've done the rolling, and you've gotten the crystal to go back where it belongs. So now that it is where it belongs, you really can't do the Epley more to keep it there. It just kind of stays there until of course it doesn't. Um, so the caveat to that one is that no, you can't do the Epley for prevention of future uh, vertigo, but yes, you can be prepared to use it again if the vertigo does recur. So that's the first question. Um, the other question that I'll get sometimes is Brant Daroff. If you've heard of the Brant Daroff exercises, it's kind of along the same lines. Um, you're doing specific head movements I don't really use them much, honestly, with, with vertigo at all. But the same answer there is no, you can't do the Brant Daroff exercises uh, preventatively to stop vertigo from coming back later on. Um, there are three things that I want to give you, though, that really help you prevent vertigo, at least in the very near term from recurring. So again, keeping with this framework that you've gotten those little crystals, those otoconio, otoconia, sorry, back to where they belong. You want them to stay there, kind of sitting on a jelly pad that lives next door to the canals. So three things that you can do pretty simply for the next usually 24 to 48 hours, which is what I recommend for my clients. The first one is avoid a lot of vertical head movements. Um, that's going to make it more likely for those crystals to float back into the canals if you do a lot of those head movements. So usually I tell folks, you know, don't lean your head back like you're, you know, scrubbing your hair in the shower. If you got long hair like I do, you got to lean your head back. It's a real pain. Uh, don't bend down too much during the day. You know, like to pick something off the floor or tie your shoes. Just avoid those vertical head movements. I usually tell folks to just avoid rapid head movements in general for the next day or two, um, just because I feel like that could cause the crystals to come back out as well. But certainly the the vertical head movement. So that's number one. Number two then is you don't really want to sleep on that involved side for probably one to two days if you can avoid it. So let's say you treated your right ear. Um, you don't want to sleep on your right side for a day or two because again, that, that makes it more likely those crystals are going to float back out into the canals. So that's number two. Number three would be um, Sleep elevated if you can. At least 30 degrees elevated is helpful. You can go a little higher if you can, or if you're comfortable you know, sleeping in a chair, that's fine too. Um, but keeping your head elevated for the next 24 to 48 hours is also going to help with recurrence of those crystals coming back out and causing the vertigo. Uh, last thing I want to mention in this video then is uh, there's a fair amount of talk and research about vitamin D supplementation. So I kind of went through and actually read that uh, research article again. And, and basically what they said is that if you've had BPPV and you have a lot of recurrence, so it just keeps recurring over and over again, what they found is that there is some possible link there with vitamin D deficiency. Um, I didn't think the article was that strong personally. I think what they really show with these different groups of where they were taking people with BPPV and high rates of recurrence and they were sticking them in different groups. And the main group that they were trying to prove um, that showed vitamin D, you know, helped lower the recurrence. They gave him lots of vitamin D. They gave him uh, B12, or sorry, a bunch of B vitamins. They also gave him some other um, different types of supplements as well. So what they basically showed, though, is that 
uh, in my opinion, the treatment of the vertigo is the most important part. So again, getting the treatment right is the most important part. And then um, for recurrence, when they did, they did the treatment in the study too. But if you were low on vitamin D, and they said low was below like 25 um, units there, um, that yes, vitamin D supplementation did help you with recurrence rates too. So that probably didn't make a whole lot of sense. But what I will say is this, if your vitamin D level is low and you're having lots of recurrence of BPPV, it definitely helps you to talk to your pharmacist or your doctor and see about supplementing uh, that level higher. It probably won't do you any harm across the board for your health. And it seems like it's got some positive impact on recurrence of vertigo as well. So sorry to make a long uh, winded answer out of that. Um, but again, and vitamin D, and again, in the study, they did vitamin D and they did B vitamins and they did some other um, types of supplements as well. But vitamin D is one of those ones that I personally think, and I think the natural health community is in, you know, in line with this, is really important for overall health anyways. So if your vitamin D level is low, you probably want to consider getting it higher anyways. So again, talk to your healthcare provider about that uh, if you need help with that. So 